Hello and welcome to another eMath Instruction Common Core Algebra 1 lesson. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing unit number 4, lesson number 12 on introduction to sequences. Let me remind you that you can find the worksheet for this video and a homework that goes along with it by clicking on the video's description or by visiting our website at www.emathinstruction.com. As well, don't forget that on each one of our worksheets on the upper right hand corner, there's a beautiful QR code that you can scan using your tablet or your phone that will take you right to this video. All right, let's talk about sequences. Let's take a look at the technical definition of a sequence. A sequence is a function. All right, we feel comfortable with functions. A sequence is a function whose set of inputs, the domain, is a subset of the natural numbers, i.e. 1, 2, 3, 4. Sequences are often shown as an ordered list of numbers. Their function notation, though, can be tricky. All right, so sequences are sort of a very new addition to Common Core um, Algebra 1. Or perhaps, let me put it this way, they're a new addition to Algebra 1. Typically, they had been taught at the Algebra 2 level, but you've probably seen sequences before. You've certainly probably seen lists of numbers like what we have in exercise number one. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is really trying to become comfortable with notation. All right, so it says if we represent this sequence with the letter A, then do the following. So let's take a look at letter A. Find A of three. All right, so this is function notation, and literally what it means is to find the third element, the third element element or the third thing in line, the third element or third in line. All right, that's pretty easy. A3 is, ah, it's 16. Uh, letter B, not hard. A of 1, well, let's see, A of 1 is 4, right? That's the first one in line plus a7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, that's the last one in line. If I take the first one in line and add to it the last one in line, we get 260. Ah, but we can also use subscripts, okay? So this is more function notation, right? Function notation. We should feel pretty comfortable with function notation at this point. But subscripts are also a good way to do it, right? Uh, same thing, a sub 2, okay, remember that's not an exponent, it's sub 2, just means pick the second one in line. So that's 8. Take a look at this, a sub 1 squared, that means take the first element, which is 4, and square it. Obviously that gives us 16, all right? a5 minus a4, that just means take the fifth element, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's 64, and subtract off the fourth element, 32, which gives us an answer also of 32. All right, solve for n, a of n equals 128. Well, okay, well there's my 128, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, ah, n must be 6. All right, so let's pause for a second before we clear out the screen, before we move on or do anything else. So a sequence tends to be a list of numbers, a particular ordered list of numbers. They don't need to necessarily be getting larger like they are in this problem, all right? They don't necessarily need to have any kind of discernible pattern like they have in this problem, all right? All they have to do is be a list of numbers, right? We then talk about the numbers by referencing where they stand in line, okay? Kind of easy. So I'm gonna clear out the text. And let's take a look at the next problem. All right, now we can certainly define sequences the way that we define functions with formulas. Right? So exercise 2 says consider the sequence defined by the formula a of n equals 2n plus 1. Write out the first five elements of this sequence. Well, the first element would be a1, right? And that would be 2 times 1 plus 1, which would be 2 plus 1, and that would give me 3. The second element, a2, 
would be 2 times 2 plus 1. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. The third element, a3, would be 2 times 3, plus 1. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. You might be noticing a pattern now, right? 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9. And the fifth, 2 times 5 plus 1, 10 plus 1 is 11. So there they are. If I were to actually write them out in that, that list, right, it would look like this. Okay? Letter B says graph the sequence for the grid shown below. It's very similar to graphing functions, right? It's kind of like, well, okay, when my input was 1, my output was 3. So I go 1, 1, 2, 3. When my input was 2, my output was 5. So 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. When my input was 3, my output was 7. When my input was 4, my output was 9. And when my input was 5, my output was 11. All right. Now, letter C is actually very, very important, okay? And it's something that my guess is you'll be tested on um, on the Common Core Algebra 1 exam, regardless of where you're taking it or who's giving it. Why shouldn't we connect the points plotted with a constant, continuous straight line? All right. Now, I'm going to actually do it, but I'm going to put it in red so that it's, it's actually incorrect. Um, in fact, let me, let me do it with my, my nice line tool. All right, so the question really is, why shouldn't we do this? You know, why shouldn't we kind of like do what we normally do? Okay? And the reason that we shouldn't do this, the reason that this is incorrect, so incorrect, is that there are no, no non integer inputs, all right? In other words, even though our formula wouldn't have a problem with something like a of 2.5, we generally aren't going to allow it, okay? So a sequence graph is always, always just a series of unconnected points, always a series of unconnected points. always a series of unconnected points. All right. Letter D is not too bad. It says, what's the 21st term in this sequence? So if you listed them out, which one would be sitting in spot 21? Pause the video for a second and see if you can figure this out. All right. Well, it's not too hard because 21 is what's called the index number. That's my n. Okay, so the 21st entry, a of 21, is going to be 2 times 21 plus 1, or 42 plus 1, or 43. That's it. So that is my 21st term of the sequence. Okay, so it's not too bad. I'm going to clear this out. Remember, you don't want the line, right? Just the unconnected series of points. Here we go. All right, so the next thing that we're going to talk about, which is really rather confusing for a lot of students when they first see sequences, are what are known as recursively defined sequences. That term, recursively defined. It's kind of neat though, because what it means is that we're going to generate the sequence not with a formula like the last one that we saw, but we're going to generate a sequence by creating terms based on terms that came 
prior to it. Okay, so take a look at exercise three. It says consider a sequence of numbers given by the following definition. b sub 1 equals 7 and b sub i equals b sub i minus 1 plus 4. Whew. All right, let's think about this. Wait, wait, okay. It says, give a common sense interpretation for this recursive function rule. Well, one thing I can definitely say is that the, let's see, the first element, well, okay, I know that the first element is equal to 7. That's what this says. Now, what, 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 how do I get the second element? Let's just think about this for a second. What does it say? It says, well, if I wanted b2, I would have to get that by doing b of 2 minus 1, right, plus 4. Well, that, that would give me b1 plus 4. So, and, and likewise, if, if I wanted to get b3, I would do that by doing b of 3 minus 1 plus 4, which would be b sub 2 plus 4. So we're going to get each element by adding 4 to the previous element. All right, and it's that subscript notation that can really confuse people. So think about it as places in line, right? So if this is where I am in line, this is one place before me in line. It's sort of the person who's in front of me. Now writing out the first four terms isn't too bad because B1 is going to be 7, B2 is going to be B1 plus 4, but that's just 7 plus 4, which is 11, B3 is going to be equal to B2 plus 4, but B2 is 11, so B3 must be 15, and B4 must be B3 plus 4, and that's 15 plus 4, or 19. So our first four elements, 7, 11, 15, and 19. All right. Define recursively. All right. In other words, we'll take each element and we will figure it out by looking at ones that came before it. All right. That's called a recursive definition. So I'm going to clear this out. And let's take a look at the next problem. Quite possibly one of the most Famous of all recursively defined sequences is what's known as the Fibonacci sequence. It's really kind of cool. I would encourage you to explore it more by going into Google and typing in Fibonacci sequence. Even take a look at images that it produces because there's lots of examples of where the Fibonacci sequence comes up in the real world and they're really kind of cool. But let's take a look at it. It says a of 1 equals 1, a of 2 equals 1. Alright, so how am I interpreting this? Well, the the first two elements or terms are 1. That's what they are. Now, what in the world does this say? Huh. Well, let's try something. Let's figure out what A of 3 is. Using this definition, right, A of 3 would be equal to A of 3 minus 1 plus a of 3 minus 2. So in other words, a of 3 is a of 2 plus a of 1. All right, let me, let me, let's do one more. Let's, let's think about a of 4. Right? a of 4 would be a of 4 minus 1 plus a of 4 minus 2, so a of 4 is a of 3 plus a of 2. So it looks like what we're doing in each case is to generate a term, we're taking the term before it, 
and adding to it the term before it, right? So a of 3 is a of 2 plus a of 1. a of 4 is a of 3 plus a of 2. So to get any term, to get any term, add the previous 2. So that's going to be simple, watch. So a of 3 is going to be a of 2 plus a of 1, and both of those are 1. So a of 3 is 2. a of 4, on the other hand, is going to be a of 3 plus a of 2. Let's see, a of 3 was 2, a of 2 is 1, so that's 3, and a of 5. It's going to be a of 4 plus a of 3. Let's see, a 4 is 3, a 3 is 2, so that's going to be 5. Let's do one more. I know I didn't ask for it, but a of 6 would be a of 5 plus a of 4, which is 5 plus 3, and that gives us 8. The Fibonacci sequence. Okay, one of the most famous recursively defined sequences. All right, I'm going to clear all this out, so copy down what you need to. All right, let's take a look at one more problem. Okay, exercise five. Kirk is trying to train for a marathon. Not really, but I, I can dream. His first month, he runs five miles per workout. He adds an additional three miles to his workout for each month that he trains. So letter A says, fill out the table below for the amount of miles that he runs as a function of how many months he has been running. So in other words, in the first month, he's running five miles per workout. But in the second month, he adds three to it. So that's going to be eight miles per workout. In the third month, he's going to add three to the previous, which is going to be 11 miles per workout. In the fourth month, adding three to the previous, right? So plus three plus 3, plus 3 gives me 14, and in the fifth month, adding 3 gives me 17. Now, <clears throat> easy enough, letter B says give a recursive definition. Now, whenever we give a recursive definition, we always want to do two things. We always want to give the initial value, so a1 is equal to 5. That's our starting value. Really important to give that. Very often students will forget that, but it's a very important thing, all right? And then you want to talk about the relationship, all right? So in other words, how do I get a of m? Well, I take the one before it, which would be a of m minus 1, and I add 3 to it. In total, this gives me the recursive relationship. Very important to remember that, though, all right? And let's graph it. Simple enough. 1 and 5, 2 and 8, 3 and 11, 4 and 14, and 5 and 17. And that's it. All right? Remember, no connecting sequences with straight lines or with any other type of curve for that matter. Write an unconnected series of points. All right, I'm going to clear these out. All right. So that was our introduction to sequences. In the next lesson, we're going to look at what are known as arithmetic sequences, and eventually we'll look at what are known as geometric sequences. Uh, and then you'll get more sequence work in Algebra 2. For now, though, let me remind you that this has been another eMath Instruction Common Core Algebra 1 lesson. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.